Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Coach the Coach Radio. Brought to you by the Business Radio X Ambassador Program. The no-cost business development strategy for coaches who want to spend more time serving local business clients and less time selling them. Go to brxambassador.com to learn more. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Coach of Coach Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today on the show, we have Alina Ugas with Final Step International. Welcome, Alina. Thank you. Thank you, Lee, for having me on your show. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about Final Step International. How are you serving folks? Well, Final Step, we started back in 2013 as a um, drug and alcohol community, you know, communication education program and that's due to you know personal history not history but struggles um, with my family and then we morphed it more into communications just you know communication skills and now what we're doing one of the branches is we are working with women um, entrepreneurs and also women um, c-level executives to, who are looking to excel in their personal, professional, and financial um, life. So now, um, from serving people who are struggling personally with, um, I guess, addiction and things like that, to now uh, helping empower women and getting them on the track to success, they may seem you know, very diametrically opposed in some ways, but I would imagine there's a lot of kind of similar skills, isn't there? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that we did realize while, you know, in the process of working with those who are struggling with addiction is that everybody's story seemed to extend from childhood. And so that's one of the things that we started focusing on. And, you know, we realized like within the first two years that we could actually, our methodology could actually work for any circumstances in your life. And that's, you know, again, through personal struggles, I realized that women are really not still to this day. We are not in a position where we should be in working with side by side with men. So now um, for your clients, is this something that how do they know that they're they need your help? Like what are some symptoms that are maybe clues to help a woman uh you know, partner up with you so you can assist them to, to reach their whole full p- potential. Right. So what we've come across is women who are, you know, complaining about not being able to excel professionally or personally or financially. So women that are struggling in the man's world, that's, you know, what I call it, And that they're always wondering, why is it that he gets, you know, the better um, promotions, better pay? So those women who are doubting, those that's really is self-doubt. If they would really trust and believe in themselves, you know, we see tons of women that are in powerful positions. They would not be doubting themselves. And a lot of them, which we've come across, are dealing with imposter syndrome that whole, I don't belong, I'm not good enough. So if you ever tell yourself, you know, negative chatter, um, I'm not good enough, I don't belong, you know, this job is not for me. That's already a clue that you really need to work with a coach, because that's extending from somewhere. Now, do you find uh, the average person struggles with that type of imposter syndrome? Is it something that affects, you know, the majority of folks and that it's something that you got to really nip in the bud if you really want to succeed? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we all have, I believe that it's normal for us to have some doubt. Um, But if that doubt persists for, I want to say, you know, by the end of the day, then that's already letting you know that you are not able to work through that doubt on your own and that having a professional help you would really be beneficial to you. Now, is that doubt something that um, is not a minor just inconvenience, but it can really sabotage, like you can do behaviorally things 
to sabotage your success that kind of just reinforce that imposter syndrome? Oh, absolutely. You know, that's where addiction comes in. Um, And it's not only addicted to drug and alcohol, you know, as women, one of um, the addictions that we have and that we help women work through is shoes, believe it or not, handbags. I don't want to say I'm addicted, but I own well over 45 handbags and I only have two shoulders. So how many can I use at a time? So, but that is just such, such a feel good to me, you know, to be able to buy a handbag just because it's pretty or whatever the case is. But then I realized prior to me, myself going through coaching, um, that was my way of satisfying that need that I had that I did not know what it was. So is that, is the need something, um, it's obviously not material, but it's something there's like a hole inside of you that you're trying to fill with these materialistic objects? Absolutely. So the same thing with, again, with the drug, you know, you have a drink or you use whatever form of drug and it just makes you feel good for the moment. So it's just like somebody that loves um, retail shopping, you know, um, that you just go and buy, 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 and you really have no need for it, but you feel good in the moment that you're doing it. So now, then, so that, but that's part of the challenge, right? That's, um, they don't see it as a problem. I guess like in drugs or alcohol, you know, they, you can look at yourself in the mirror and go, well, this probably isn't great, but buying shoes or a handbag, you probably aren't thinking, wow, this is a problem. Right? Like, it's exactly. not a big deal. Right. You just know that you can't pass up a pair of shoes. You can't pass up a handbag. And then if you really ever stop to think like, do I really need this? When you realize that you have a closet full of boxes of shoes that you don't wear, but just because it felt good in the moment. And then let's not talk about looking at the credit card um, and realizing, no, I could not afford this, but though you still bought it because it felt good in that moment. But that is to, it's filling a hole that you have inside. You just can't pinpoint what it is. Now in your journey and your career of helping people at various stages of their life, have you come up with kind of your own methodology to help these folks? Absolutely. Um, Our methodology is called the needs-based method and it's trademarked uniquely to us. And this is um, something that we've been working on to be able to train other coaches um, and even therapists um, and counselors in it. So what it is, is to be able to identify the need that you have in the moment that doesn't allow you to move forward that the shoes are a perfect example. As a matter of fact, I just wanted to let you know that we did have a client that that was her addiction were shoes, you know, but of course it was a little bit more destructive. Um, You know, she was doing things that she wasn't proud of in order to be able to afford the shoes. So um, that's a perfect question for you to ask yourself, you know, is this a need or a want? Do I need it or do I just want this? And if you want it, why is it that you really want that Whatever it is, if it's the drugs, you know, the alcohol, the purse, the shoes, why do I want it? And then once you start asking yourself and looking deep inside, then you'll realize it, it's filling a hole that you don't even know what the hole is. Um, most of the time, I want to say 95% of the time is something that happened in childhood. It doesn't have to be a traumatic experience because a lot of people believe that traumatic, that trauma is something, you know, Um, an abuse, a rape, you know, a death, whatever. No, it could be something as simple as having a sibling being born and you're not knowing, you know, the uncertainty of how this new individual is going to impact your life. That's the trauma. You know, I could honestly say that for years, that was the trauma that I had. Um, My sister was born and I was born and raised part of my life in Cuba. And I didn't know, you know, back then they don't tell you, parents don't tell you anything. And so I didn't know my mom was pregnant. She just showed up with this little bundle of hair. And um, I was like, okay, cute, take her back, you know, because I was the the only girl for five years. And believe it or not, that's something that impacted my life, I want to say for 40 years. Until I started seeking coaching, um, I didn't realize that that was a childhood trauma. Right. A lot of times people are kind of looking for that big trauma that's, 
you know, a movie trauma that is horrific, but it, it, it can be just a disruption or how you perceived a threat when, you know, it's not, other people might not see that, uh, whatever that incident was as right. a threat. Like your family didn't see it as, oh, I'm probably traumatizing Alina right. here by bringing this right. kid in. You know, right. this, they're like the happiest day ever. Now we have two girls, right? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, um, when folks work with you or when women work with you, what does that look like? It does it, is it always kind of one-on-one coaching? Is it group coaching? How do you kind of work with your clients? It's one-on-one coaching. Um, we have had group coaching in the past and, you know, we're willing to do it again if there's a need. Um, recently there hasn't been a need for a um, group coaching. Women really like that one-on-one, that special attention And one of the things that I do say that sets us a little apart from others, um, other than, you know, our methodology, the needs-based method, is the fact that they get two for one. They get Michael, my business partner, and myself. Um, You know, they get Michael as a male perspective, and then they get me as a female perspective, and then we work tandemly. We, you know, I'm a hypnotherapist and an NLP practitioner, so we integrate a lot of other um, methodologies to be able to help the women achieve the goals that they're looking for. And then now you're looking for other uh, kind of folks out there to be trained in the way that you uh, do your work so that they can be helping other people in wherever they are. Absolutely. We have an 85% success rate. Um, Michael, my business partner has interviewed over 12,000 individuals that are suffering from behavior um, issues, you know, drug, alcohol, um, anything, addiction, shoe addiction, purse addiction, whatever. So, and that's where we realized that 95% of them, believe it or not, come from a single parent household. It doesn't matter what um, education level or, you know, social level that you're in. Um, You know, the ones that are in a higher economy, um, their issue is that their parent you know, ignores them. Either the dad's a doctor, an attorney, whatnot, the doc- uh, father's not paying one-on-one attention. So those kids are equally as ignored as the ones that are living in a single parent household that the mom is always working. And then you help folks kind of um, just deal with that and how to manage it better and how to overcome it. Right. We teach them how to, first of all, become aware. We have a seven step system that we put them through. So one of the biggest things is we teach them the awareness that they don't have, um, you know, step by step. And then it brings them clear understanding of their behavior and how to change or shift their mindset. And then once they have that awareness, then you give them kind of the tools to empower them to move forward. Absolutely. So actually, our seven step system is part of the tools that we use, we just have that copy written. Um, And that's something that if they go through all seven steps, sometimes, you know, it does take about six months to a year, 18 months, depending on what is the uh, original trauma, they will have that for the rest of their life. And what they do is every situation to look at it, you know, they need to understand it. They need to become aware. Then what is the solution? So we give them all those tools to work with. And if somebody wants to learn more about uh, your system, your programs, uh, and your certifications, uh, what is the best way to get a hold of you and your team? Oh, they could either email me. We're all over social media. Um, our new branch of the business is 360 Mindset Coaching. Our business is Final Step International. Like I said, um, they could email me at Alina at Final Step International. We're all over social media, so we're pretty easy um, to access. Well, congratulations on all the success. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. I really appreciate you for taking the time and having me on your show. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Coach the Coach Radio. Mm -hmm.